I think you're not expecting this, but this is the color I like the most in this selection because look at that. Look at the texture. Look at the granulation. That is just so beautiful. If you are from the Philippines and you'd like to try these paints out, I'll be making some hand poured sets and make them available at my Shopee store. I'll be putting the link at the description box should you want to try these paints out. Hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today I'm super excited because we are gonna be reviewing this particular watercolor brand that I've been longing to have since 2017. And as of now, I believe this is the only review of this watercolor brand here on YouTube. So without further ado, let's review the Utrecht watercolors from Brooklyn. I got this landscape set at dickblick.com for 113.11 US dollars or roughly 5,542 Philippine pesos on October 2020. And I also got two more tubes or colors for 10.58 and 12 US dollars or roughly 518 and 588 Philippine pesos. That makes each tube from the landscape set to be only around 9.43 US dollars or around 460 Philippine pesos which is of course much cheaper than getting solo or individual tubes. Of course, those prices exclude shipping fees of FedEx. If I total everything including the shipping fees, this set would cost me around 185 US dollars or roughly 9,000 Philippine pesos. If you want to see the unboxing video of this set along with the Pelican watercolors and the Grumbacker Academy, I am attaching the link here and also the links of the reviews of those other sets. I first came to know about this brand when I was checking out handprint.com and here are some of the points that convinced me since back then and I think up until today there are no any other reviews of this brand of watercolors. Anyway, these are the quotes from handprint.com. Number one, Utrecht paints are among the most light fast, most transparent and least staining of the paints I've tried. Number two, the accuracy and clarity of paint names is excellent. And lastly, number three, the pigments are high quality, cadmiums are bright and sweet, ultramarine and cobalt blues are rich and clear, the earth colors are warm and nicely spaced along the spectrum from a sunny ochre to a purplish Venetian red. However, Handprint also mentioned doubts on the paint's formulation of not using plasticizer. It was also pointed out that Thalo Blue, Prussian Blue, and Dioxazine Violet are diluted and nearly weak. So now we are to find that out because I have a Thalo Blue in my selection. Anyway, the observation of handprint was made in 1999, so that was 20 years ago and many things might have already changed, who knows. Utrecht is made in Brooklyn, US, but the name is based in a city in Netherlands. So I am basing my pronunciation on the Dutch clip I found at Wikipedia and I'm playing it now. Utrecht. Utrecht. If you check the official website of Utrecht, you'll find that the technical information about each color and pigment is complete and I think it could rival the website of Isaro if you remember. So at Utrecht, they have the following information. First, they have the pigment name. Second, they have the pigment type. Third, the chemical name. Fourth, the chemical formula. Yes, they have the formula. Fifth, the properties where you'll find the description of the color. If it's granulating, if it's opaque or transparent, if it's staining and more. Sixth, they have the permanence or the light fastness. Seventh is the toxicity. And eighth is the history. I think that is my favorite part because it's about history. It's about the paints, the origin of the paints. So it's very interesting. I'm loving the documentation that they're giving. And I think this is very helpful, especially to those artists who are very technical like me. So now let's check out the box of our paints. And as you can see, it's still wrapped in plastic. I think that is to protect the tubes from falling out of the window. And uh, let's remove first our plastic. So, this is just very satisfying to do. 
So of course the first thing that you'll see in this box are the tubes because we have a window here and it says here Brooklyn, New York since 1949 so obviously it's made in Brooklyn in US and we have also a uh, seal here Brooklyn made and of course we have here the Utrecht logo artists watercolor landscape set aside from the landscape set they also have a portrait set and a basic set and I prefer the colors and the pigments here and of course it says here 12 14 ml tubes and on this side we have the same information also on this side and at the back of course we have here again the logo and it says here the Utrecht artist watercolors landscape set offers the key colors preferred by many of today's leading plein air painters this palette allows you to capture all the light and weather conditions nature has to offer professional quality Utrecht artist watercolors are proudly handcrafted in Brooklyn New York we also got some warnings here but it says it conforms to ASTM D-4236 and we have here the item number and it says here proud to be gold certified founded in 1949 in Brooklyn, New York. Utrecht is officially recognized by the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce as a leading locally based manufacturer and employer. And here we have a preview of the colors that are included inside and they also provided here the company name the address i think and is this the phone number and the website of utrecht now let's take out our tubes and as you can see they are placed in a cardboard tray and it's quite sturdy and also as you can see there are two different designs of the tubes so let's compare Anyway, the tubes are made out of aluminum painted white. On the first tube, we have here the color name in three different languages. It says here Series 2. We have here the brand name. It says here Artists Watercolors, handcrafted, established in 1949, Brooklyn, NY, New York. Contains 0.473 fluid ohms or 14 ml. And while on this tube, I think this is the older tube, correct me if I'm wrong, we have here the color name in English only. We have here the logo of the brand, Watercolor Professional Artists Colors Series 3. And also it says here professional quality art supplies since 1949 contents 0.473 fluid ohms or 14 ml. They're almost the same but in here we have the color name in three different languages i think that's the only difference here now let's go at the back part and um, here they provided the pigment code and the pigment name the vehicle used which is gum arabic and also the light fastness rating and uh, it says here transparent so that's the transparency rating they don't have a legend they just say it's transparent and it says here, made in USA, Utrecht Manufacturing, so that's a company name, Brooklyn, New York. So I think that's it. Now let's compare the Utrecht 14ml tube against the other tube sizes from the other brand. So first, we have a 5ml from the Schmincke. We also have a 5ml from Daniel Smith. We also have a 7.5ml from the Grumbacher Academy. Then we have a 10ml from Van Gogh. Now we have a 12 ml tube from My Mary Blue. Well, this is confusing because it looks like the My Mary Blue is bigger or is it thinner? I don't know. Anyway, we also have a 14 ml from Windsor and Newton Professional. So these two have the same capacity. I think, um, yeah, I can agree. Now we have the 15 ml from Mgram and lastly we have the 21 ml from Sennelier. And now for our swatches and sample painting, I am using as always Arches 185 gold press cotton paper and for my brush I have here a 1 4th inch silver black velvet flat brush and my Escoda Reserva number 8. 
And to speed this up, I'm gonna be dotting down our paints. So now let's start swatching. The first color is lemon yellow, it uses PY3. Next we have English Yellow which uses PY216. This is one of the reasons why I got this set. PY216 is very rare. Next we have Cadmium Red Light Pure which is using PR108. This is a uh, genuine, a real cadmium color and it's super vibrant. But as you can see, if you uh, use it in washes, light washes, it gets more on the transparent side. So uh, it's manageable actually. Next is the Permanent Alizarin Crimson using PR177. This is way cooler because this is PV19 and it's, yeah, it's a rose color. And of course, the next color is the Ultramarine Blue which uses PB29. And yes, hand print is correct. This is really nice. Next is the Cerulean Blue Pure which uses PB35. This is the real pigment for Cerulean Blue. There you go. Next, we have the Thalo Blue Green Shade using PB15. So according to handprint.com, this color is a little diluted. Basing on what I'm seeing now, yeah, I can say that it's not as deep as the other versions of PB15, but still this is really strong. And I think this version is more manageable than those which are deeper. Next is the Hooker's Green, which is using PG8. PG8 is the real pigment for Hooker's Green, so I'm glad to see this color here. And this pigment, PG8, is the green at White Nights. Next, we have Spring Green using PG7 and PY3. This is the first color here that is not single pigment. I'm not a fan of this shade, but I'm glad that it's not very yellow. Next, we have Golden Earth using PO48 and PY3. And um, it looks like a Kinacridone Gold Deep from Daniel Smith. It's like also the Kanakardone Rust in uh, M-Gram. Next we have Indian Red using PR101 of course. This is also one of the reasons why I got this set because I love that shade of PR101. The Violet Iron Oxide or the Kaput Murtum. Next we have uh, Burnt Umber which uses PBR7 and yeah this is really rich from this I can say that I'm really loving the paints because they're just so smooth so while we are waiting for our swatches to dry we can now proceed to our sample painting now for our sample painting, I have the following colors. We have here Burnt Umber, English Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, Kinacridone Red, Spring Green, Cerulean Blue Pure, and Cadmium Red Light Pure. I have dotted them down earlier in our palette and I think we're ready to start. By the way, our sketch here is a tulip farm because the trek is a city in Netherlands. I remember the tulips in Holland, in Netherlands, so... I have here a tulip farm. 
So I'm gonna be speeding this up to save time. If you have any questions regarding our process, just comment it at the comment box. I think we are ready to start. Now both our sample painting and swatches are finally dry, we can now have a closer look. What we got here was a landscape set and we added two colors. So for us to judge the color selection in our landscape set, let's first cover the two additional colors that I got. So here now are the colors in the landscape set so for the selection they have here two yellows a cool and a warm two reds a warm and a cool two blues a warm and a cool two greens three earth colors and a black for me this set is really very good as a landscape set but i just have one comment um i think they really need to consider adding a uh, Thalo blue or a turquoise blue in this selection because I cannot achieve that color by mixing any of these colors and I think that color is really necessary in uh, painting beaches. Beaches are also landscapes, right? So I think it's very essential and if I need to kick one color out from this landscape set in exchange of having a turquoise or a thalo blue color that would be Sorry, paint gray, but I need to remove this because in landscape, you don't usually need very dark grays or black color. And if ever you need that color, you can just mix your ultramarine and uh, burnt sienna or burnt umber to achieve a very dark gray. But you cannot mix any of this color to get a thalo blue or a turquoise color because it's a primary blue. It's like the cyan in CMY. So, yeah. I really suggest they include it here. That's why I added Taylor Blue in this selection. And the reason why I added the PV19 Carnacadone Red is because I was really aiming to uh, get the CMY mix in this selection for it to be more versatile, in my opinion, because these for me are the real primary colors if I need to have three. These are those colors. So now I think whatever color you add in this, as long as I have these three colors, I can have them as my basic set. Now, when it comes to the individual colors, I think I need to discuss this because I'm really pleased by the quality and performance of these paints. Let's begin with the PY3. It's really vibrant. It's really alive. So I'm loving it. It's transparent. Unless you put too much paint, of course, it gets more on the opaque side but overall it's transparent now we have your English yellow which is a PY216 it's a rare pigment I think because I've only seen this today and uh, it's also transparent unless you put too much of it but yeah it's a very nice golden yellow color and what's good about PY216 is that it's perfectly light fast it's excellent in light fastness so I love that now for the cadmium red light pure using PR108 it's a genuine cadmium color I was expecting this to be opaque but it's not and uh, there are actually some traces of the pigment in the black line but still for a cadmium color it's transparent now for the PR177 permanent alizarin crimson it's a mid-red 
but it's very transparent and it's beautiful it's not the most light fast red color so I uh, added PV19 and I really wanted to have a uh, cool um, red now we have PB29 ultramarine blue this version is just so beautiful it's not very granulating it's in the middle but it's very punchy now for the PB35 this is a real cerulean blue pigment so it's naturally granulating and at the same time it doesn't have actually high tinting strength now for the Thalo blue of Utrecht according to handprint it was diluted and I think he is correct but I think it's favoring me because I really hate very strong Thalo blues I hate staining colors so this is just right for me it reminds me of the Thalo blue of white knights so this is just right for me the hookers green PG8 is a genuine hookers green color the color is very similar to the PG8 of white knights and I love this color although it's not very light fast but it's very useful if you want to make the hookers green PG8 stronger you can mix PY216 and PB29 to it now for the spring green I'm not a fan of this color because it's too vibrant and it's too neon like for a landscape painting but I think it will be useful for the leaves for the foliage parts that are near to the viewer of your painting that's why I used it in my uh, tulip farm but I also muted it down but anyway the next color is golden earth it used PO48 and PY3 if they used PY150 here you already have a Kronakadon gold for some reason they chose PY3 and this color is like a burnt shenna it's like the burnt shenna of Windsor and Newton that uses PR101 yeah that's the color I remember with this it's very clear it's very clean we have a PR101 Indian red which is also beautiful I think this is semi opaque but I was able to make it transparent because I uh, use just right amount of paints now for the PBR7 burnt umber I think you're not expecting this but this is the color I like the most in this selection because look at that look at the texture look at the granulation that is just so beautiful and I think this is the most granulating burnt umber ever see that it's just so beautiful I, I don't usually use burnt umbers in my sets or in my landscapes I uh, choose burnt shenna or Indian red or yeah the Kunakadon gold but this is just beautiful I had to use it and I think this will make a very nice or interesting dark gray if you mix it with the ultramarine and I think I uh, used it here so yeah this is my favorite color in this selection and lastly we have here the paints gray which uses PB29 and PBK9 and uh, this paints gray is very neutral in the sense that I cannot point out if it's warm or cool I think it's just in the middle and uh, I don't know if that is a good point it depends on your preference for me it's just fine but if you look at it closely it has this interesting texture it reminds me of the sodalite genuine I think of Daniel Smith of course and yeah this is also beautiful I'm not just a huge fan of paints gray but yeah I really appreciate the texture of the paints gray of Utrecht so now let's discuss the quality of the paints when it comes to the vibrancy and intensity of the colors obviously they're very alive and I love how punchy the colors are they're not the most striking they're not the most pigmented but they're one of the clearest and cleanest paints ever and I just love it it's in the middle of everything when it comes to the transparency of the colors I think they're really transparent I think they're one of the most transparent because even the cadmium colors and the cerulean blue are more on the transparent side which is not a common thing in other brands of paints when it comes to flow it doesn't flow as quickly as core and I think core is unbeatable with regards to flowing but yeah it's really manageable also I was able to uh, help it flow and I'm okay with that when it comes to mixability I think it's very good I think it is one of its strengths and 
the way these colors easily mix makes it very inviting to beginners and for those who are transitioning from school grade paints to artist grade paints. These paints are like a fusion of White Knights, Schminka, and Isaro. And also I feel like it's a subtle version of Emgram paints. So all of those characters from my favorite paints are in these paints so there's no questioning that these paints are good. And now of course our Utrek is not gonna miss the chalky test so to do this we are gonna be rubbing a sheet of tissue paper to see if the paints are gonna be transferring in our sheet and if that happens then these paints are chalky so let's see. So I think our paper is clear. So it's now damaged but still we did not get any traces of paints so that makes our Utrecht watercolor paints not chalky. Now we have come to our favorite part which is the comparison portion and for this let's begin with a set of paints that are less performing as compared to the Utrecht watercolors. So basically this first set are the student grade paints and let's begin with the best by watercolors. Then we have the Simba Lion. We also have the Dong A Creative, the Sterling Arts Watercolors, the Giorgioni Watercolor Cakes, the Faber Castell Solid Watercolors, the Sakura Koi Pocket Field Sketch Bus, Reeves Watercolor, Faber Castell in Tubes, the Bayou Studio Watercolors in Tubes, the Pentel Watercolors Fine, the Mary's Watercolors in Tubes, the Mary's Watercolor in Half Pans, Magiwa Basics Watercolors, we also have the Art Ranger Watercolors. We also have the Lefranc and Bourgeois Duver watercolors, the Prang watercolors 2019 and the 2007. We also have the Kuretake Gansai Tambi. We also have here the Pelican Transparent watercolors, the Grumbacher Academy, the Simi Art Solid watercolors 50s, the Simi Arts Arch Arch watercolors, the Simi Art Semi Dry watercolors, the Superior watercolors in half pans, the Miyahimi Solid watercolors, the Superior Foldable palette, the Superior Fan palette. We also have here the Pretty Excellent watercolors. Then of course we have the Koinor and Elinke Brilliant watercolors, the Windsor and Newton China version, the Sonnet watercolors, the Windsor and Newton Catman. The Van Gogh 20 new colors and finally the Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half pants. These are student grade paints and I believe they are less performing as compared to the Utrecht watercolors which is an artist grade set of paints. Now our next set of paints are the artist grade paints so this is gonna be critical and for each pair that I'm gonna be showing I need to be choosing one. So let's begin with the Kokuyo Kamlin watercolors from India. Of course, I'm choosing a trick because they provided the pigment code, but both are great paints. Next, we have the Lucas Aquarel 1862. The colors of Utrecht are stronger, so I'm choosing them. Now we have the Prima Marketing Tropicals. Both are very intense, but the pigments of Utrecht are stronger. Now we have Mary's Masters watercolors. I prefer Utrecht. Though both are very vibrant, but yeah, I'm choosing Utrecht because the colors are cleaner and there are less multiple pigments in the selection. Now we have the Paul Rubens watercolors. I think Utrecht wins because it's just more pungy than the Paul Rubens and also they're cleaner. Now we have the Mongyo professional watercolors from Korea. I think Mongyo is more vibrant, but the pigments of Utrecht are stronger, so I'm choosing them. Now we have the Blocks Extra Fine Watercolors. I think I'm choosing Utrecht because they're more vibrant, they're more alive. Now let's go to the White Knights Watercolors. I think these two are very comparable, um, vibrancy-wise, but if you compare some of the colors, you'll see the difference. For example, here the PB29 of Utrecht is better, also the, the PB35 is, is also better, but the green PG8 is very much the same, so... I think they're very comparable but the texture but the feeling I think I'd go with the Utrecht watercolors. Now for the Isaro, their texture is very much comparable. I had the same feelings when I was using them but obviously visually Utrecht wins. Now let's go to the Rembrandt Luxury Pocket Box set. Now the colors of Utrecht are punchier. They're more attractive but the Rembrandt's colors are just cleaner in my opinion and I think yeah, I can, I think, really give this a draw. I'm not sure, but I'm really torn. 
Um, but I think for the price, I'd go with Utrecht, but they're really comparable. Now let's go to the Egal Yohani watercolors. These are my hands down favorite handmade paints, but I think, I don't know. I think I can also give this a draw. But yeah, obviously the colors of Utrecht are stronger, they're more attractive, they're cleaner, but Egal is also fun to use. But okay, so let's give this time the point to Utrecht because they're more affordable and they have uh, more colors in their range. Now let's go to the Windsor Newton Professional Watercolors. This is gonna be hard, but I think I'd go with Windsor Newton Professional because of its color range, its availability, and I just feel very at ease using them, I think. But yeah, visually, I think I'd go with Utrecht, but okay, I can give this a draw at the moment <laughs> because it's really hard to choose. Now let's go to core watercolors. The colors of core are very intense. They're more attractive, but the colors of Utrecht are cleaner. They're more transparent. So this is another hard. I think. I think for now I'm choosing Utrecht watercolors. I'm sorry. Um, um of course the flow of core is unmatchable, but. Utrecht watercolors are just so easy to use and they're clear and clean and they're also vibrant so I think I'm favoring the Utrecht watercolors plus the price if you buy them per set is much cheaper. Now let's go to the Holbein watercolors. Visually Holbein is more attractive, they're more pungy, they're more vibrant and everything but the colors of Utrecht are really cleaner and more transparent so this is again another decision to make for me but yeah I think I'd go with Holbein it's really hard but I think yeah I'd go with Holbein now we have the Mijello pure pigment set the Mijello mission gold are really one of the most vibrant paints they're also very clean and uh, I, I just love these paints and um, they're also very affordable so for me I think I'm gonna go with uh, Mijello Mission Gold and finally of course the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolors you know my answer of course I'm choosing Daniel Smith because of its range because of the characters of the color the earth colors and yeah and uh, this is the brand I know the best so I'm very comfortable with them and <laughs> I'm choosing them so now if you are gonna ask me would I recommend the Utrecht watercolors my answer is a definite yes yes of course I highly recommend this watercolor set I really had a great time using it and my expectations were all met and it actually exceeded my expectation I was really happy the colors are really vibrant they're really punchy but they're not intimidating they're not intimidating in a way that you can easily uh, achieve the colors that you want because the colors are very easy to mix and there is you know a subtle character in a way that I really love in these paints. Handprint is correct, they're very transparent. It's one of the most transparent watercolor sets that I've tried. But for me the best characteristic of these paints is that it's easy to mix. It's easy to use and it's fun to use so I really recommend this for beginners or for those artists who are transitioning from student grade paints to artist grade paints. Surely this is very beginner friendly and they're not intimidating. I think I only have one problem with these paints, not actually with the paints but it's about the availability of these paints because it's only available I think at dickblake.com. Which is also the reason why there are no reviews of these paints on YouTube. I think I'm the first one to review this on YouTube. And aside from handpaint.com, I have not seen anyone made comments about these paints yet. So that made me even more, you know, um, interested and curious about these paints. So even if the shipping fee was very high, I really pushed on getting them and today I have no regrets. If you are from the Philippines and you'd like to try these paints out, I'll be making some hand poured sets and make them available at my Shopee store. I'll be putting the link at the description box should you want to try these paints out. 
So I think that's all for today. If you have any suggestions, questions, recommendations, or comments, just put them all at the comment box and I'll be responding as soon as I can. Again, if you're not subscribed yet, please do subscribe to my channel to show support. Again, thank you for watching and see you on the next video.